In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Java Swing application that connects to a uh, Darby or Java DB embedded database. Now, before we get started with creating the app, what we need to do is to create the database. So I'm going to go to the Services tab, as you can see in NetBeans, and uh, click on uh, Databases. Click on the little arrow to open up Databases. And I can see the Java DB. This is the embedded uh, database. And as you can see under it, uh, there's already a database called Sample. Now I'm going to create my own database. Right click, and firstly you have to start the server. All right, output editor says everything is fine. Let's go back and right click again, create database. I'm going to call my database library. Give it a username. Make sure the passwords match. And OK, you're done. So your database has been created. You can see the database is listed under Java DB. And also down just below the drivers, you will see there's been a new uh, database connection that's created. right? So one is the database itself. But in order to use the database, we need to create a connection to that database. So this connection, you can see it's localhost 1527 forward slash library, which has the same name as the database. Now we're going to do two things here. Firstly, we're going to establish a connection to the database. To do this, very simple, right click and click on connect. So you'll see uh, that little icon. It's showing a complete icon rather than a broken one like the ones below that. The second thing I'm going to do is to rename this uh, connection to a more convenient name than this uh, long uh, URL type name given. So right click again, rename, and I'm going to call this one library. Okay, that, and there's a nice convenient name for our library database. Now we need to create tables in this database. So when, uh, when you create, uh, when you click on the little arrow, you'll see that it has uh, a root schema and other schemas. Now let's open up other schemas. You'll see there's a schema called app. Right click this one and click on set as default schema because this is the app we're going to use or the schema we're going to use in our application. All right, so when you open up the app schema, you'll see tables, views, procedures that are available under the schema. Tables, obviously, because it's a new, completely new uh, database, uh, it's blank. What we're going to do now is we're going to create some tables. To create tables, there are two ways. One is using, uh, using the visual editor, and the other is just using SQL syntax. I prefer using the SQL uh, syntax because it gives you more power. Gives you more power over what you can do. So right click on tables and click on execute command. All right, so it opens up a SQL window where you can type in your SQL commands to execute. Now what I'm going to do is I've already got uh, pre-saved commands, SQL commands, which I'm going to copy over from my uh, text editor. This SQL script will be available to you on the, on the website. All right, so now let's take a look. Before we run this uh, SQL uh, query, let's uh, uh, analyze it create table authors so we are creating a table called authors so what our plan is actually to create two tables two linked tables one is the authors table which is the independent table now the authors have books so there is a dependent table called books that will be our next table so in order to create a book you need to have an author a book cannot exist without an author so we're going to have an author table and a book table, and the books table will be linked to the authors table. All right, the authors table, as you can see, has four fields. It's a very simple table. The first field is ID, which is of type integer, not null, meaning there cannot be an empty column. Uh, generated means it's uh, an auto increment uh, field. That means it is automatically generated by the database. You don't have to ever manage this field always as identity, generated always as identity. The fact that it's an identity means that it will be unique and it will be auto-increment. 
first name of the author vacha 50 second the surname the vacha 50 and of course email then we set a constraint which is a primary key constraint a constraint so we're calling this constraint author pk which stands for author pri primary key and we're setting the id as the primary key now remember the primary key in a table is the identifying key for example if you have in a table people with the same name and surname for example you got a john smith and then you got another john smith how do you identify one from the other it's using the primary key which is the id in this case so well and good we've got our sql query now to run this query we click on this button here run uh, run statement click on that and hopefully everything will go well let's look at uh, the output execute successfully very good so now when i go and look at my schema on the side i can see under tables there is a table called authors i click on the little arrow to open it up and there's my fields i can see id first name surname email now you'll notice something different about the id the icon for the id field it's got a red uh, little square there rather than, than blue that shows that it's a primary key so if you hover over any field it gives you information about that field so as you can see mine shows that it's type integer um, part of primary key true part of an index true etc all right very good now the next thing to do is to create the the books table all right so i'm going to go and pick up the sql query to create the books table all right create table books very similar to the author table uh, it has id which is also an uh, auto increment or an auto generated field the title of the book the edition of the book which is a var character variable character author which is of type integer now the author field in this table will refer to the primary key id of the author table so each book will have at least will have one one author again we're setting a primary key we're naming this primary key book pk and we're setting the id as the primary key everything looks good let's run this query and see what happens all right again looking at my uh, sql execution output output box everything seems okay i go back to my uh, services uh, box and i can see now there's a new table called books very well id title edition author and you can see id is the primary key so of type integer there's just one thing that remains now and that is to link the books table to the authors table obviously a book has to be linked to an author now we need to set in order to do that we set the the author uh, field in the books table as uh, as an external secondary um, uh, key that links to the authors table so i'm going to do this using this statement the foreign key statement oops delete that right so alter table books we're going to do a slight small alteration to this uh, table and we're going to add a foreign key which is going to refer to the field author so in other words it's going to refer to this field the author field in the books table so the author field in the books table is actually going to become a foreign key which references author's id in other words this field is going to reference this field so the author uh, field in the books table is going to reference the author's ID field. All right, let's run this query. Look at the output. Um, okay, execution finished, no problem. Let's go and look at my table now. So we can see the, the author's key is here. Let's refresh this. There we go. So you can see the author's key and now when you hover over it it gives you uh, uh, information about the the key all right so we've created our database now it's it's completely ready we need to create our app around this database so we're going to create a CRUD app uh, create read update and delete uh, database app that's going to 
uh, give us the capability to populate the tables as well as to view what's going on in these tables. We'll do that in the next video.